Hey everybody, welcome back to Minis, Cards, and More with another exciting Hero Primer. I haven't dusted off this template in a while, but I am excited to get back to it so we can add to our collection of heroes that we've overviewed on the channel. So, today's Hero Primer video is going to be all about Bobby Drake, aka Iceman. And I think I can say it, I'm going to say it right now. I thought that Nightcrawler was going to usurp Bobby as my favorite hero of the wave. But I was wrong. Iceman is still amazing, still fun, and there are still builds to be uncovered. So let's talk about them in today's Hero Primer. So, just like we've always done way back when in the Wayback Machine, we're going to go over his identity cards, we're going to go over all the cards in Bobby's kits, which ones we think are really strong, which ones are more of traps or harder to build around, and why. Um, and then we'll go through each aspect and talk about a couple cards from each aspect that work really well with Bobby Drake, a.k.a. Iceman. We'll wrap up with a little bit of talk about theme and then go to our patented Hawkeye archery scale to see where Bobby stands. So, Bobby's identity cards. We have four recovery, name, Bobby Drake, traits, mutant. Bobby Drake begins the game with six frostbite upgrades set aside. With the cool off ability, response, after you change to this form, shuffle one ice card from your discard pile into your deck for each copy of Frostbite in play. Frostbite. Frostbite in play. That could be really awesome because you could shuffle three cards back into your deck. A lot of the mutants seem to have this when I go to this form, shuffle a thing back in, which I know I've said is kind of like generic-y for them, but it's clear that that's what they're going with for this like mutant identity trait is reshuffling and recurring into your deck. It's a really strong ability, especially when you can shuffle more than one back into your deck, which you can here with Iceman. On the hero side, Iceman has one thwart, two attack, and two defense with the ice and X-Men trait with the ability freeze, interrupt. When Iceman would make a basic attack or defense against an enemy, set aside, blah, blah, attach a set-aside copy of Frostbite to that enemy. Here comes the coolest hero on the team, and hopefully this wave. Five hand size, 11 hit points, pretty generic, 6-5, likes to flip, mutants are, mutants are good. But it looks like to understand both of these cards, we need to know what Bobby's main hook is, which is all about this dash-costed Frostbite upgrade that is set aside at the beginning of the game. So you're going to have a pile of six of these set aside out of the game. It's Frostbite. It slows the enemy's damage and threat placement. It's like a mini Stunder Confused, but still works on characters that are stalwart or steady. So this upgrade gets attached to them as Iceman performs an attack or a defense against an enemy. It can also get placed in other ways that we'll go through in his kit. And it gives the attached enemy minus one scheme, minus one attack. Forced response, after the attached enemy activates or leaves play, set this card aside. So if we can avoid activations with things like Stunned and Confused, we can let Frostbite linger longer and longer and longer because those are replacement effects for that activation. At least that's how my group plays it. This is really cool. It's a completely different type of secondary economy, like War Machine or Groot or all those characters that have this secondary economy, right? This thing that's not resources, that's a resource that they have to use to turn on bonuses on their events and to get the full use out of their hero. Now we have this set-aside set of cards that isn't crazy like Doctor Strange's, but is still super fun to build around. So I think this is an amazing hook. I love it. It totally makes sense with Iceman's theme, and I'm very happy with how this effect works. I wish there was... a let me go back. I wish there was a way we could make Frostbite stay out longer. There are ways in kit to avoid activations to try to make that happen, but it's a little bit harder than you'd want it to be. Okay, moving on. The key cards from Bobby's kit. So I think these first two, it's it's a generic hero that likes to have his upgrades out. So we have Cryokinetic Perception. Hero response. After you resolve your freeze ability, exhaust this card. Draw one card. If that card has the ice trait, ready Iceman. That's going to let you apply a second freeze ability in the same turn, which is amazing, right? Card draw, great. Um, card draw for things you already want to do, even better. Two cost upgrade, nailed it. Um, the second one is our resource generator. So we have a two cost power belt. This is a deep cut. Um, item, tech traded, you get three hit points. Uh, exhaust power belt to generate a wild resource for an ice card, which as of right now are just cards from Bobby's kit. So it's a little sad that you can't use this to pay for perception. It would have been a little nice if it could be used for any card, but as we can see on this page, the next five cards we're going to talk about are all ice traded cards. That also means that team building exercise could be a good card, which we'll talk about later. 
All right, some other key cards, in my opinion, is the three-cost upgrade Frozen Solid, hero form only, attached to an enemy, max one per enemy. When the enemy would activate, discard Frozen Solid instead, then attach a copy of Frostbite to that enemy. So if you get a copy of Frostbite from attacking the villain, and then you Frozen Solid the villain, so it skips their next attack, when they attack you and this is replaced, it's going to place a second copy of Frostbite. So now you're going to have two copies of Frostbite on there, and you've avoided that attack with like a pseudo-stunned. And the next round, the villain's going to have minus two in solo. Or it's going to pass to the next player in multiplayer. So that's one thing I found with Iceman, is he plays very differently between solo and multiplayer. More so than most other heroes we've had. You really have to think about the sequencing of when those Frostbites are going to fall off, and how do I optimize that sequencing within the best of my knowledge. I'm still going to get a... Tr uh, what's it called, uh, encounter card. It could be a treachery that makes the villain attack, which could knock off all my best laid plans. Either way, amazing card, a pseudo stunned or confused, because you can flip down after playing it. I love it. Next, we have chill out. Two cost events, ice, superpower, and thwart traded. Hero action, thwart, remove three threat from a scheme. Three for two, pretty generic. And attach a set aside copy of frostbite to an enemy. You get to pick the enemy, so you can neutralize a minion for the turn, you can slow down the villain, all sorts of different options with Chill Out. And you'll note that on the next page, there's going to be an attack that does almost the same thing. I think Chill Out is a little more important, and that's because Bobby only has one thwart. So you're really going to need, especially in solo, to rely on these Chill Out abilities and your Frostbite to throw down, slow down the villain's threat placement. So I put Chill Out in there as a key card. Now we have our vanilla cards. These are the cards that are great, but they might not be like the most important. They're not always the cards you want to see in your opening hand. Um, so we've got Snow Clone. This is a ally that is non-unique. There are two copies of it. It has dash for thwart and two for attack with one consequential, with the ability that Snow Clone takes one less consequential damage after it attacks an enemy with Frostbite attached. That's awesome. A super fun thing to combo around. I think one of the videos that we're going to have this month is me playing some crazy leadership deck where I try to attack with a bunch of times with Snow Clone in the same turn. The downfall of Snow Clone is this cannot have upgrades attached. That stinks. <laughs> that means we can't Voltron this Snow Clone and just keep attacking the villain because he's frostbitten and won't go away. Um, allies are fleeting enough. Please give us more reasons to leave them on the board and have fun with them. Not more reasons to just, you know, sacrifice them to the chump block. But that's okay. We get two copies of Snow Clone. He's really cool. Has the Iceman and the X-Men trait, which is significant. Then we've got two copies of Arctic Attack. Attack, Ice, and Superpower traded. Two cost with an energy resource. Hero action, attack, choose. Deal four damage to an enemy and attach a set-aside copy of Frostbite to it. Or deal six damage to an enemy with Frostbite attached. Um, so note, if the enemy has Frostbite attached, you could still place a second Frostbite onto that enemy. So you could base attack for two, place a Frostbite. Arctic attack for four, place another Frostbite, giving the villain minus two if you want to flip down on their scheme. Doesn't always work out that way. A lot of times this is just a two for six for me. Um, it's still a super fun card, but there's only two copies of it. So you can't really count on it like you can that thwarting event. Next we have Ice Blast, which is our AOE attack. It's an ice and super power traded card with the hero action, choose a player. Attach a set aside copy of Frostbite to the villain and each minion engage with that player. Deal three damage to each enemy with a copy of Frostbite attached. So that's not just each cup enemy engaged with that chosen player. So if my friend over here has five Ultron drones on him, um, I can choose a player, sorry, four Ultron drones, and I have one on me, like the, what's it called, the, the guard Ultron drone. I can attack and do two to that Ultron drone in front of me, place a Frostbite. I can play Ice Blast to put Frostbite on all four drones my play partner has, and one on the villain, and then I can deal three to all of them, just nuking the board. Um, so that's really cool. I really like it. A lot of times, there's not a ton of minions out there. So this is great for, like, get me out of a horrible situation. Um, but usually, if you're in that situation, something else is going wrong that led to you to get there. And this doesn't always bail you out. It doesn't fix all your problems. All right. Next, we've got Ice Wall. Uh, this is a singleton copy, four cost support. It is ice traded, forced interrupt. When an identity would take any amount of damage from an enemy attack, place that damage here instead. Then, if there was at least 8 damage here, discard this card and attach a set-aside copy of Frostbite 
to the enemy that just attacked. So it's going to absorb damage for all the identities on the table. A lot stronger in solo than it is in multiplayer. It's usually not even going to make it all the way around the table in a four-player game. Uh, but you do get to put a Frostbite out there in the middle of the villain phase, and it's really, really good in solo. So an amazing card to let you sort of ignore the villain for a while. Especially if you place this and then can get multiple copies of Frostbite on the enemy to slow down how much damage goes onto Ice Wall in general. And then the one trap card. This was the card I was the most excited about when we talked right after the Hero Pact came out, and it's Ice Slide. It's a two-cost upgrade with Ice and Superpower trait. It gives Iceman plus one thwart, plus one attack, plus one defense, and aerial. Amazing! And then it has this force response. After you change to Alter Ego form, sh shuffle this card into your deck. So it's a free card on top of the other ice shuffles that you're putting in, but it's kind of painful, right? You want to keep those plus stats, so you really have to maintain hero form and not flip down if you're going to want to build around Ice Slide, which you can do. It's not completely a trap, but you have to really decide my entire deck is going to hinge upon Ice Slide, which isn't the best idea when there's these really amazing key upgrades that you need to get out more than you need to see Ice Slide. Okay, so our hero overview, our weaknesses. He's a difficult hero to master in solo. It can be really hard to figure out what the best move to do is in solo. You're a well-rounded hero. You have attacking, you have thwarting, you have a way to defend, you have slow down for the villain, but the longer you draw out the game, the more chance the villain is going to combo into some encounter card that's going to ruin your day. So I think he works... A lot. He's a lot easier to calculate what's happening in solo, but he's a little bit weaker in solo, difficult to master what you want to be doing with him exactly. Um, you want to be placing Frostbite on the villain, but you also need to clean minions up. So it's a real, little bit hard in solo because if you have minions in front of you, you have to use your base attack to get rid of those minions. Then you're not putting Frostbite onto a thing that's going to activate. You're actually just wasting the Frostbite, and it can be a little bit difficult. He's also pretty setup dependent, so if you don't get those two key upgrades, you're really stalling your game until you see them. So things like superpower training and things to get those upgrades out are essential, but still, that can be hard to do in solo. Um, his strength is that I think he works well in all four aspects. I think there's cool builds for him, even undiscovered builds in all four aspects. Um, I think Frostbite is effective against the villain and sneaks around Stalwart in a sneaky way. I don't really like Stalwart on villains. I think it's it locks out too many heroes that I like. I'll say that. Um, but I think that uh, this is a sneaky way to give us something that's like a pseudo-stun or pseudo-confuse against those Stalwart villains and still make them fun. And he has amazingly fun recursion tricks. All right, so going on to our aspect primer. In aggression, we're going to want to play into that archetype that's all about having attachments on minions. So we've got things like marked and suppressing fire to put upgrades onto minions. We've got cool attacks like the new surprise move. A lot of this came in Iceman's deck. It was like the archetype that he fully supported. So hero, inter hero interrupt on surprise move. When you make a basic attack against an enemy with an upgrade attached, you get plus two attack. If this attack defeats the enemy, ready your hero. I love doing that with um, the overkill uh, weapons because then you can like get the most out of that plus two attack, get to ready your hero, still get to place another frostbite on the villain when you ready and then attack again. Super fun. Uh, Shark Girl obviously gets plus attack, but attacking minions with upgrades may as well include her. She's a two cost ally. Two cost allies are still good. <laughs> Um, we've got uh, Combat Training and God Slayer here in case you want to do some sort of attack and ready build using your Perception or Reflexes or whatever they were called. The one that lets you draw an Ice Guard and maybe ready. Um, I think that could be really fun, especially if you get Ice Slide going and you get yourself up to four base attack. Super fun, like, ready and attack build that you can build around with Iceman that's not overwhelmingly powerful like some ready and uh, attack builds are. All right, Injustice. I think we want to lean into the ability to flip as much as possible. So I really like using Foiled. Um, if I place a Frostbite on the enemy, and then I know the enemy's down to one scheme, and I have Foiled in my hand, I can flip down knowing the villain's only going to place one scheme. So it's not a Confuse, but it's pretty close to a Confuse. Um, upside the head, right? anything we can do to add Confusion or Stun to our deck is going to be strong, because that lets us skip activations and keep Frostbites out there for even longer. Same reasoning for Sonic Rifle and Dazzler. And I really like including Sense of Justice. The resource matching doesn't really matter to Iceman, um, but when you have that and the Power Belt down, all of your thwarting events become free. And a free 3 fret removal and uh, Frostbite placement is just what the Dr. Iceman ordered. So I really like that combo. 
All right, leadership's a little strange, right? We know X-Men leadership with Uncanny X-Men and Beast and things like that is super strong. And our Ice Clones do have the X-Men traits, so they cost one once we have Uncanny X-Men down. So you can always build like that. On top of that, Iceman is very event-dependent. He's got a lot of events in his kits. They're not all four copies of or three copies of, so bringing something like Kalu to go search out those events can be really strong. And if you can find a way to ready Iceman at least once around, getting two Frostbites on the villain and then using US Agent as your defender, a lot of times you can not take damage from the villain and just let US Agent chump block but like ping one back with Retaliate every turn, and that can be super fun. I also have been recently playing a build with Get Ready, Command Team, and Lead by the Front with my Ice Clones. Yes, they can't get upgrades, but with Lead from the Front, I can often get them to 3 attack. And then if I get a Frostbite on the enemy, and I have a couple Command Teams out, or a Get Ready out, all of a sudden those Ice Clones like buzz into 9 damage a turn, and it just becomes crazy. So I think that's super fun. I think people should try it out and see if they like it. Alright, for Protection... Um, Obviously a very good protection hero. You have your two defense. You have a way to mitigate damage. So anything that's in the unflappable line of when you defend and don't take damage, gain this bonus is going to be really good. Um, at the same time, if you're out of copies of Frostbite, it's happened. Um, you can play things like Taunt. The villain attacks you during your turn, losing those Frostbites, and then you draw three cards. Only you can defend against this attack. Um, so that can be really fun for Iceman because it can draw you into a bunch of more cards that let you reapply those Frostbites that just fell off the villain, so you can kind of take the most advantage of them. Um, things like Preemptive Strike work similar to Foiled, but for protection, right? So I get three or four, no, not three or four, two or three copies of Frostbite on the enemy, and then I let him attack me, and I Preemptive Strike away the boost card, and all of a sudden he hit me for nothing. Yeah, I lose my copies of Frostbite, but I do a bunch of damage and maintained hero form, which I'm pretty happy about. All right, and then the basics, right? We know, we mentioned superpower training, team building exercise. Almost every card in your kit is ice traded, so take advantage of that. They are all going to share a trait with Iceman. Um, it doesn't really let you do any sneaky things out of turn. Maybe you could put that support in out of turn, and then someone else could use a taunt or whatever, um, but not that exciting. Uh, just cost production is cost production. Similar with Deft Focus, almost everything is a super power traded card. Let's take advantage of it. And I really like Mockingbird in Iceman decks because, as I've said, those uh, status conditions, he doesn't seem like a status condition kind of hero, but he sneakily is a super status condition -y hero because it really emphasizes how strong his Frostbites can be. All right, theme. Not much to say here. They really went all in on just ice, 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 ice. Without much flavor to the Bobby side of things. Wow, I spelled Bobby like Mockingbird Bobby. That is embarrassing. Um, the lack of focus on Alter Ego has been a sore spot for me for all the mutant waves. And I guess it wasn't much better before that. But I really get sad when we get these generic heroes that don't seem to dip into the flavor of a character beyond this like snapshot of their powers. And I feel like Iceman really falls into that trap. The mechanics are sound, and they mesh well with Iceman's abilities. So, amazing. I'm super happy that they did awesome work making Iceman fun and thematic for his powers. But I wish we got more Bobby flavor um, out of Iceman. Bobby's a very flavorful character. He has lots of personality, and we don't get to necessarily see that outside of maybe some like punny card names. Um, but those are in every hero, so they don't feel special or significant to Iceman, which is a little bit sad. All right, on to our archery scale. We are way over our 15-minute goal. So we're going to go through power level... Decision-making, aspect viability, thematics, and fun factors. So again, power level is how strong I think they are. I'm looking for a sweet spot in power level. Um, if someone is way too strong, then I don't like them, and they probably go in the two or one bucket. If they're way too weak, they probably also go in the two to one bucket. We want that Goldilocks character. For decision-making, we're make looking for, does this character have interesting decisions during the game? Beyond just deck building, are there interesting decisions for me to make when I draw a handful of cards every turn? Aspect viability, this is more about deck building. Can I build in all the aspects? Is there one aspect I have an affinity for and am I the best at that aspect? Or am I sort of generally good and have cool builds with all of them? Thematics, how well do I match the thematics of my character? And fun factor, that's the me factor. How much fun did I have playing Iceman? So let's go through power level. I think Iceman is a four. I don't think he's the strongest character in the world. I don't think he's the weakest character in the world. I struggled here. I almost gave him a five because I feel like fives uh, are a little bit stronger than Iceman. Um, but I, I gave him a four in the end. I think he's a very strong character. There's no reason to avoid him um, unless you just don't want to play a fun character. 
All right, decision making. I think there's a ton of interesting decision making in Iceman, so I gave him a five there. Um, deciding when to flip down, what to use your frostbites for, where to place your frostbites with all of those events can be super fun and super interesting, both in solo and in multiplayer. So I think he has a definite five for decision making. Aspect viability. I think he's a five here as well. I know a lot of people have said that his uh, leadership decks are just generic X-Men leadership decks. And while that may be true, you get two leadership X-Men, you get two X-Men allies in your signature kit. And there's a ton of other fun builds and leadership that he can play. I think he jives well with justice. He jives well with protection. He jives well with just about everything, especially the aggression. So I'm going to give him a five in aspect viability. Thematics. This is Iceman's low point. Yes. Iceman makes ice. Ice is cold. Chill out, bro. Ice. I get it. Ice, ice, baby. But seriously, let's, let's focus on the character a little bit. More than just their identity card having a cool picture. So I think we could have seen a lot cooler Iceman if we had delved more into his personality. That being said, he's still a very competent and fun hero to play. Going to that, fun factor. Iceman is a 5 out of 5 for me. I find his decision-making uh, is so fun that he skyrockets me into the 5 tier. That I mean, honestly, most characters end in the 3 to 5 tier for me, but he's up there at the top. Uh, part of this is Cult of the New, because Iceman has been out in this last wave. But part of it is also, like, I really enjoy the decision-making and the frostbite mechanic that came in Iceman's kit. So, our final ratings are... Oh, I didn't put the slide in there. Now we got to do math on, our, on the spot. 5 plus 5 plus 5 is 15, plus 4 is 19, 22. That's going to give us a 4.4 out of 5 for our average, which is pretty, pretty dang good up there with the core set heroes that I absolutely love. All right, so that wraps up our Iceman Hero Primer. Thanks for watching. Once again, thanks for coming back to the channel after our long, long, long hiatus. We're really happy to have all our viewers back or any of our viewers back. I hope you think that Bobby is as cool as I do. I think he is super fun. I just wish he was a little bit more thematic. What are your favorite Iceman decks? I'd love to see links in uh, the comments below. I've looked through Marvel CDB. There's a amazing ton of decks out there for Bobby, so please go check them out. Uh, link your favorite decks, your favorite gameplay tips, your favorite Iceman strategy tips in the comments below, so that as people watch this video, they can know exactly how to be as cool as Bobby Drake. Thanks for tuning in. We'll have a new video next week. See ya.